experts see different things in the same nutritional data? That's the topic of this episode in another food fight. Recently I mentioned that the Annals of Internal Medicine published studies arguing that eating red meat poses minimal health risks for most people, and even our certainty about that link is weak. With these conclusions in hand, the authors offered a set of recommendations that most people can continue their current levels of meat consumption. Johnston, an epidemiologist at Dalhousie University, ran counter to many established health authorities. Several nutrition researchers wrote me to say that they vehemently disagree with the publication of these papers and feel that they could do actual harm. They believe that red meat and processed meat consumption poses a health hazard. And then, if people don't reduce their consumption, they're putting themselves and the planet at risk. The following questions may help you understand why even researchers in good faith can land on different sides of this debate. The first question is how good nutrition research can be or the problem of research in this area. It's almost impossible, and some would say unethical, to do the most rigorous type of experiment, a randomized controlled trial in areas like red meat consumption. People who eat more meat, or maybe they smoke, drink too much alcohol, or don't exercise, those things would also lead to bad outcomes. It's hard to tease out individual components over time. If you do trials of people at higher risk, those who already had heart attacks, for example, it's easier to see if changes matter. The Pretty Med Trava, which studied the Mediterranean diet, focused on people who already had diabetes or several traits, placing them at high risk for heart disease. Still, these people aren't necessarily representative of the general public through dietary recommendations or. It means that some researchers will rule observational evidence, which is easier to obtain, as low quality. Others will argue that it's the best we can get. Therefore, we should apply different standards to such research. Thirdly, we should care about signals like blood pressure. Or only significant events like heart attacks because the excellent outcomes are rare. Study sometimes looks at intermediate measures, such as weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels, which can change in shorter periods. High blood pressure or cholesterol levels are widely believed to be significant risk factors for adverse events. Others will disagree as to how much we should rely on these immediate measures. Therefore, should we let people decide for themselves? People like to smoke when we tell them not to others might counter. The International Journal of Cancer 2012 found that men smoking more than 30 cigarettes a day have a 250% increased risk of developing squamous cell carcinoma. That's huge. An increase of 18% for a relative risk of 1.18 for processed meat consumption is not the same. Therefore, it might be reasonable to think about how much people derive joy from their current diets, Relative risk refers to the percentage change in one's absolute or overall risk. What should we say in the face of less than optimal evidence, nothing? Play it safe. Unfortunately, too many of these arguments on meat consumption devolve into tribal sides. On the other hand, there are points on which I do not see as much disagreement. Eating beef, for example, is a significant problem for the environment. Eating less to improve the long-term outlook for climate change could make a huge difference, it would be something on which a majority of those involved in these debates might agree. In conclusion, the risk associated with red meat consumption is relative, depending on an individual's unhealthy lifestyle, such as indulging in smoking or alcohol. Consumption of red meat for such individuals translates to adding gasoline to fire. Therefore, it is essential to know the health conditions you are predisposed to and decide what is good and the most appropriate measure. If you enjoyed this episode, do kindly subscribe to my channel on YouTube for more videos. Would you mind letting me know what you think in the comments section? I would also be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, and I remain your host, Sunday Clement.